Be excellent to each other and party on. We're back with another Legacy League. Today we're playing four color Beanstalk Control. Beanstalk has been a staple, you could argue a pillar of Legacy for a while, and it has been kind of squeezed out by the extremely aggressive rescaminator strategies, but I am thrilled to say that Grief has been banned and rescaminator is no more. So today we are going to be leaning heavy into the engine of drawing cards with Beanstalk, with Psychic Frog, which somehow evaded ban, and with Tamio, Inquisitive Student, who has been flipping and winning so many games for me. To back up these format all-stars, we have Murktide Regent, which becomes a mold drifter, basically, once you have some beanstalks out and grows quite quickly and is a way to kind of explosively win the game. Also has a little synergy with Psychic Frog. We have Witherbloom Command, which is great for mid-range type matchups where we can remove Orcish Bowmasters, which is a nightmare for our deck, and can also destroy opposing Beanstalks, opposing Carpet of Flowers, opposing Vexing Bobbles, all kinds of things. And then here is the real difference from what I've been playing, mostly Bug Beanstalk. We are playing a full eight Exile-based removal spells. These are great for just removing just anything, really. Uh, this can remove a flip Tamio, for example. This, by the way, can also kill a flip Tamio as one of its modes. Um, and then we're just trying to stay alive long enough. I got a single days in here, the surprise days, um, to be able to get our card draw engines online and win. Of course, we've got the best cantrips ever printed, the best counter spell ever printed, and a mana base that does manage to squeeze in a single basic land. This can get uh, we can fetch this with all eight of our fetches. We can also get it with Lorien Revealed, and we can use it to potentially Hydroblast a Magus of the Moon or a Blood Moon. So we do have an out to a Resolve Blood Moon. We don't really have any outs to Resolve Harbinger of the Seas, but uh, let's just say that if we suspect our opponent's about to Harbinger of the Seas, we can keep a white mana untapped or fetch uncracked, and we can respond uh, by floating mana and hopefully Leyline Binding. Actually, we won't be able to Leyline Bind because it'll make all our lands... Um, islands, uh, but it it is possible that we could get in a situation where we have enough mana to lay line behind. We just need, you know, five mana on the table that's untapped. It's tall order. Uh, so that uh, harbinger of the seas is definitely going to be a problem. What I'm not as worried about is opposing control decks because we have three orcish bowmasters in the side for combo decks. We have a containment priest. Very good at stopping Sneak and Show. Very good at stopping Dredge. Good at stopping Green Sun Zenith slash Natural Order combo. Also, incidentally, pretty good against Aether Vile decks. Aether Vile decks, however you say it. Um, and we have Consigned to Memory for the Eldrazi matchups. Uh, we have a single Damping Sphere, which can slow down. Eldrazi decks can also help us fight combo decks that are stack-based combo and can help slow down 12 post decks. I'm not sure about this card. It's been good and not so good periodically. I think it's worth including. We also have Lavinia for combo matchups. We've got a couple of Force Negations for especially turn zero combo matchups like uh, Oops All Spells, like the um, deck that might come back Necro Dominance. Now the Grief's not in the format. We've got a couple Grief or a uh, couple Carpet of Flowers uh, in the event that we run into Delver. Hydroblast also helps out against Delver. And we have Pernicious Deed. The big bad, remove everything from the from the game, basically, or from the board. Very powerful spell uh, that we will be bringing in against death and taxes and other creature-heavy uh, decks like uh, Cradle Control. Uh, it might come in against Eldrazi. It's not great against Eldrazi. It is really good against Cephalid Breakfast. So it's just great to be able to park it on the table and be able to uh, wipe your opponent's board at will. So this is the deck. Uh, Five-color Beanstalk. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do five games, as always, five matches, and it should be a lot of fun. So I'll see you in round one. All right, we're back for round one versus likely Espervile, which is really cool because I love playing both playing against and playing as Espervile. It'll be interesting to see if they can keep up with our value. We are on the play. They do, in fact, have 80 cards. They will reveal Yorian as their 
companion here. This is a keepable hand. It's not a fantastic hand uh, because they do play Wasteland. I think I keep and I go ahead and play out Tamio and I just hope that they can't immediately remove her. They also play for Caracas. Um, I mean, we might want to just, we're, we're definitely keeping this. Uh, the main question is, do we want to just ponder to find a second land, set up subsequent draws rather than play Tamio? Because uh, they play at least three Caracases generally in Esprovile. Um, I mean, we could easily just get wasted out of this game. Yeah, four Wasteland. I think Ponder is the cautious thing to do here. I will most definitely force... Oh, this is good. Yeah, this is basically two lands. So I think next turn we just keep an uncracked fetch and we can get the Psychic Frog as well, but we're definitely going to need to get the Lorien revealed. So I'll just do it like that. Um, another alternative, of course, next turn is we force it Aether Vial and then we waste whatever land they cast it with if it's not a basic. They're fetching. Okay. Uh, so it looks like they're on Nadu, most likely. I'm going to force this because if we don't force it, we're not going to force the next thing in the cast. So now what I'm going to plan to do is play Tamio. We probably don't need to be worried about getting wasted ourselves anymore. I do want that Psychic Frog. I'm going to go ahead and waste here and then I'll deploy my Tamio. I suspect they're on Bant Tamio, which is going to, I'm sorry, Bant Nadu, uh, which unfortunately is going to be a really strong deck. And I may actually play it <laughs> as much as I dislike Nadu because it's such a good uh, deck. I mean, it's like really well positioned now that grief has been banned. Okay. This is good. I'm going to go ahead and attack in and see what they do here. It looks like they're going to plow, which is fine. Cause that means that all, Oh, they're not going to plow. Okay. So we do get the token. We shouldn't have to worry about them having, um, what do we get here? I think we get a Tundra and then we're just going to play a Psychic Frog and this kind of mask that we're playing Beanstalk. So we, we are going to be drawing a lot of cards that they can't somehow interact with us. They may force this. Okay. They don't seem to have days because that would definitely be a days. Okay. Wow. They just scooped. That's great. They must have not found a, another land. All right, so against Bant Nadu, we do want to bring in Deed for sure. Uh, I don't, I mean, Orcus Spellmaster is not the worst. It's not great. The reason I say it's not the worst is because it can uh, ping some of their creatures. Like, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to not bring it in immediately. The main problem with the Bant Nadu deck is like, I think we take out days on the draw, our singleton days. Um, I think we could take out our basic island. I don't anticipate them with a three-color deck uh, going after our, our land. Um, I do like the wastelands. We could get punished, but we do have Lorien revealed. This is not going to be an explosive matchup. It's going to be a little bit slower. The reason I'm bringing in Containment Priest is because it does shut down Green Sun Zenith, which I suspect they're playing. Yeah, uh, if they are playing a, a deck that happens to have a lot more cards like Ice Fang Quaddle, then it'll make sense to bring Orcish Bomb Masters in. But we didn't see any snow covered lands, so I don't get that vibe. This would also be a matchup where we might. Yeah, no, I think we're just going to do this. Let's do it. Carpet would definitely be an option here. However,. Uh, we're expecting our opponents to have carpet. Yeah, carpet into carpet into your opponent's carpet is good. Maybe we should have boarded one of those in. This is a deed hand. Has plenty of mana. I don't think we'd throw this back. Even if they have carpet, deed can potentially wipe the board after turn three. Uh, and their deck is probably going to amass a lot of resources on the board. Okay, I'm just happy that they're not opening with uh, the... A delighted halfling that that card is a total pain to deal with we could ponder to look for removal here let's see what we draw we just want to curve into pernicious deed i mean that's a pretty good card i think pondering is fine here um yeah i'll just play this out and i'll ponder 
now they know a little bit more about our deck. They know we're not Esper. I probably should have left led with the Tundra hit there. Force is great. Leyline Binding is great. And this is all amazing. So I'm just going to keep it just like this. So we do want to resolve up the Beanstalk next turn before we have to Force, ideally. And then we can Lorien the subsequent turn. Caracas is pretty strong against our deck, but they are having a really slow start, which we welcome. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just Beanstalk now. Green. Beanstalk. They would definitely force if they could here, but apparently they can't. So for the rest of this game, we're likely to have Beanstalk on the table, which is very strong. Unfortunately, Pernicious Deed is pretty bad, so we might want to brainstorm to shuffle that away. Teferi is a force. We're not going to get the full double Beanstalk when we force this, but we are going to get one. Plows a good pickup. We didn't get a land, so what I think I'm going to do here is I'm tempted to take a turn off to Brainstorm. See if we can find a fetch. If we can't, then I can just Lorien Revealed. Okay, so... Ah, oh, I shouldn't have freaking used the green source. That was dumb. Yeah, I should have definitely um, Brainstormed with the... Because there was... Yeah, I already had the the uh, of the beanstalk in my hand. There's no excuse for that. That was just dumb. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, I think Lorien revealed. Uh, I don't want to put it back. I think I am going to go get the Savannah and cast this out. Um, I think Deed goes back. We just don't want to blow up our board. Um, Lorien revealed may be able to go back to... We can, we can always Lorien Revealed for a black spell. We don't even have any black in our hand right now. I'm just going to go get the Savannah here. It's not getting us any closer to having Domain, but I can't pass up an opportunity to resolve a Beanstalk here. All right. We don't have a Force anymore. They could just untap Nadu and um, the other card, and we they would be able to draw a ton of cards. Actually, they don't have green mana for Nadu, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, they're going after one of our green sources. All right, so here... Huh, I thought we shuffled that away. Well, I think that was just like, we did shuffle it away, but we just drew it again. So one option, brainstorm, hope to find a blue source, uh, and then cast Murktide. No, we can't do that. I think we need to go ahead and just... I'm just going to go ahead and Lorien Revealed here. I'm going to go get an Underground Sea. I'm going to play it. We go blue, blue. We're going to attempt a Murktide here because we're going to get a bunch of cards. One, two, three, four, five. Blue, blue. We're going to get two cards. We're going to have a very dangerous threat on the table. We get a Psychic Frog. We get another land for next turn. Um, yeah, I'll pass. Again, I would love to leave mana up to be able to address Nadu. But drawing two cards and getting a big threat on the table, I it was hard to resist that. So we'll see if we're dead here. We have disrespected Nadu, for sure, with the way we played this game. Halfling is fine. I've got to plow for it. That means Nadu's not coming this turn. Another Teferi, maybe. Oh, they're putting Yorian in the hand. Okay, great. All right. Um, I mean, I can one mana... Leyline Binding and draw two cards. I think that's fine. So I'm going to go get the Xander's Lounge. And then I'm just going to do it off of this blue source. This might elicit a concession because we're pulling so far ahead here. Yeah, they conceded. All right. Well, that was just dominance. Uh, good games. But I feel like <laughs> it's a great feeling to, <laughs> to be casting Leyline Binding into... Uh, Double up the beanstalk again. I, I haven't really had that rush since I played this deck, Eternal Weekend. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was just, imagine nine rounds of playing this. That's what I did at Eternal Weekend 2023 North America. My brain was mush by the end of the day, but I'm hoping to build up my endurance through these leagues so that I, I can actually have the stamina to be able to play this deck well. This seems like a super strong hand, but let's see what our opponent's on. Alvas. All right, uh, looking like they're on tempo. Ooh, yeah, yeah, okay. They're not on rescam. They already switched. 
So if we're against this deck, I think we're favored with all our exile base removal. We'll see. Um, this does have the ability to island Tamio, and I think that is a better opening than um, holding for holding up a force. Because I, based on their gameplay, let's see, have they ever played combo? They they are very much a tempo gamer. They switched to reanimator, but now, uh, hmm, yeah, I think. I think this is fine. I'm just going to open Tamio, put them on the defensive. I mean, we are on the play. Island will also be good because they're almost certainly going to go after our lands. Okay, cool. They have a fatal push. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, they open Delta. I, th I think push is definitely a good call here if they have that option. They went for straight black. Interesting. Entomb. Okay, wow. So they're trying to play reanimate even though grief is banned. <laughs> gristle brand okay yeah that's scary uh you know grief was only banned a few hours ago it could be that they're still able to play grief oh no um so i think our options are to attack here i think our best option is just to uh hope to spike a blue card for force of will off this beanstalk they're unlikely to be able to counter this based on their op their basic swamp opening, but I could be wrong. It looks like they may be on just straight reanimator. Oh, wow. They are. So there's a force. Nothing I can do about that. And we're naked if they have a reanimation spell next turn. Um, we will be able to remove whatever they uh, play out eventually, but we're not going to immediately be able to remove it. And it's possible they can waste us off of our green white source here too. Okay. So they. it looks like they are on some sort of blue white scam or blue black scam. Okay. So they have a gristle brain in play. They've drawn down to three life. They've got 10 cards in hand. Fatal push. Nothing I can do about that. All right. Um, unfortunately this mystic sanctuary does not help us cast Leyline binding. So we would take a crack from gristle brand here. Let's see what they discard. Discarded an entomb and a polluted Delta. All right, that's what we're talking about. Okay, so we now have Leyline Binding around Days Protection. I think it's highly likely that they counter this. Um, I think we go for it. I, I don't think waiting favors us, like giving them the ability to untap. I don't think that that's good. If they do force this next turn, we get another try at it, but they'll have drawn another seven cards. Okay, they're forcing the two life. Okay, and they pitched a Psychic Frog. So it looks like they're trying to play rescan without grief. That's all I can think of unless they're somehow able to continue to play grief. Maybe they're finishing out a league that they had already started. Okay. So we're dropping from 19 to 12 off this hit. And they're going to be able to draw another seven cards. I don't think there's any chance of us winning this, but I do have another chance to exile, uh, to remove uh, Gristlebrand next turn. But of course, removing with Leyline Binding means they can bounce with Brazen Borrower. They played a basic island, which may mean they don't have a wasteland. They may also be loath to go lower in resources here, uh, lower in life, because, you know, I could have like a Bowmasters or actually if I draw Witherbloom, if they draw a whole lot and I draw Witherbloom, uh, I can kill them that way. They're reanimating my creature. Okay. They're going to eight. So they have my Tamio out and they can flip Tamio by drawing but that'll give Tamio to me. I hope they realize that. They're bouncing my clue. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know that I agree with that play at all. They have three cards in hand. Uh, Murktide Regent is pretty good here. I think, unfortunately, the Sanctuary is going to come down and I'm not going to have... Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attempt a Leyline Bind here. Uh... Yeah, I'll lay them bind. I've got a force backup. They've already used their brazen borrower. Okay, they're drawing, which I believe should flip Tamio, because if Tamio comes to me, they can attack and kill it. They may have double days here. Okay, so they daze and they daze again. Yeah, so they stop my uh, ley line binding, and the show is going to go on. But I do have a flip Tamio now. I mean, I guess I plus. There's nothing 
the re- oh, I could have forced the second one. I'm pretty sure they would have been able to stop it. Yeah, that was dumb. I didn't think about the fact that I had that force there. It might actually be better to Merc Tide next turn anyway, because my Merc Tide will be eight eight. And uh will it be eight? No, it won't. I don't have a path to an eight eight Merc Tide. So they're gonna get a bunch more attacks in here, unfortunately. They're gonna probably kill my Tamo here. So they're gonna gain six life this time, not seven. So they're not gonna be able to activate this turn. But I need to draw uh, a plow or some sort of removal immediately. They're gonna play land for turn. Uh, they've got 10 cards in hand. Psychic Frog coming down. I don't think this is the force. I think we hold. And uh, we, we play out a weak Merc Tide. And they can pitch a bunch of cards to Psychic Frog. But we're not necessarily dead. I mean, this is way more of a game than I thought it would be. Okay, now we're going to draw dead. No? Oh, okay. okay. We rip up Brainstorm. I think I'll just uh, Brainstorm here. We get a Psychic Frog of our own, which doesn't help us. Murktide does potentially stop Psychic Frog a little bit, but we really need to remove this Crystal Brand from play. So our option, of course, is to just play the Mystic Rainforest, fetch, and then we can brainstorm again trying to find uh, a way to remove this. If we do that, we kind of abandon. So Psychic Frog, I can deal with. It's not the end of the world. Let's see. It's going to attack for three plus 10. And so it can attack us for 10 down to two. Wait, it could attack us down to one. Uh, so I think force will is probably shut off here. I can't imagine them not having a force. Okay. So this may seem extreme, but I don't think Murktide is super useful here because we can cast it, but it's, it's not going to be able to stop anything. We need removal. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two cards back, play this. Psychic frog can help us get in the game after we clear all this stuff. I think what we do here is we probably grab, uh, we can't grab a non ET like a land that comes in play tap because we may need all this mana. So I think I'm going to grab a tundra here. I'm going to attempt to brainstorm. I'll use the black mana for brainstorm because I'm not casting the psychic frog. I'm either finding removal or I'm conceding. I didn't find removal. I think we just concede here. Uh, okay. So I could put this back. We do have five mana to cast Lauren reveal next turn which seems extremely unlikely. Um, I'm just going to blue here. If I can find a plow and for some reason they can't counter it, then uh, I can attempt to plow. I'm going to any order shuffle. Yes. Yeah. I'm just going to concede. I'm not going to show them any more about my deck because they have me like dead so many ways. Yeah. Uh, that was a beating. I didn't expect to be facing uh, blue black, re uh, blue black scam or it's not even scam anymore. What do you call it? Just blue black reanimator. I didn't expect to to be facing that a few hours after the ban announcement. Um, okay. So cards that are coming in, I feel like Orcish Bowmasters is probably pretty good here. They probably have their own Bowmasters. Um, Containment Priest is good. I don't think we board in negations cards that are bad. I think we are on the play. So days could actually play, man. I do wonder if forcing the second, uh, days, would have done anything we would have gotten rid of yeah then they would have uh frogged and then they would have had a ton of cards in hand for frog but they, we wouldn't they wouldn't have had a lot of life yeah maybe maybe that was a critical play was not pitching them because i was like stuck on murktide okay this is my path to victory this is how i like win but it wasn't gonna win anyway so i think yeah i think that was a bad play um with the bloom command seems pretty weak here I, it might be able to take out a Bowmasters. Uh, I don't know if they play Anime Dead. Usually, you don't want to be blowing up Anime Dead because that means you're already, you've already lost the game if you're at that stage of the game. We took out basically all of our graveyard hate um, in preparation for this matchup. Uh, like literally, the only containment priest because my thinking was everybody's going to be sick of playing graveyard strategies and they're not going to be as good. We need to cut cards though. Yeah, maybe we don't bring in Orcish Bowmasters. Maybe we just focus on like the, the things that, that like definitely win the game for us, like containment priest. Um, I don't want to board out the days cause they're, they're playing so aggressively and days could potentially uh, stop one of their things. Um, if there's any card that we could board out, it could probably be a, a redundant Tamio. I don't know. Tamio seems good. No, I'll take, I'll take her out. I mean, she's always something you can consider 
uh, boarding out. The main thing is if they are playing this deck now, it's probably like an all-in combo deck rather than a mid-rangey deck. It might make sense to bring these in. I No, I'm not, I'm not going to board it in. I'm going to resist the temptation to bring in the Force Negations. And my reasoning is simple. They are going to be casting Entomb on their turn. And Entomb, now that they don't have uh, the scan package in their deck, assuming they don't have it, is... Um, oh, this is a good hand. I'm going to keep this. So I could definitely open Hedge Maze and in Beta Force, which I won't care about for the rest of the game. Main problem... I think we do this because they're likely to entomb on their turn. I will not be opposed to keeping a backup. So we have force blue card and days. Uh, we don't have mana to pay for days though because we got greedy and played this out. So hopefully that doesn't bite us. If they main phase and entomb, that's bad. They're thought seizing us. That's fine. They're probably going to take psychic frog. They, What they take will tell us a lot about the constitution of their hand. Okay, they took a psychic frog. So we have a second Psychic Frog on top. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play out this Misty. And that gives us the option to go get another. Because we don't want to jam Frog into possible days here. We want to hold it for another turn. I can go get... Yeah, that's fine. So they still do have cards they can reanimate, like Troll. It's not as good as Scam. Or it's not as good as Grief, but... All right, and I'm going to go get the land that gives me all my colors here except for white it doesn't give me white uh we don't currently need white i need black though i'm gonna go ahead and get this all right untap draw okay brainstorm is a good top deck i am gonna play this and i'm gonna deploy my psychic frog here and in fact i think it's good to keep this mana in case they are able to waste us and then have days up so i'm gonna do it like this one problem with this is it's giving them yet another potential reanimation target if they're planning to reanimate next turn. But I don't think we can force here. They also know that Daze is coming. So they know that uh, whatever they do, you know, they may have actually had reanimate in their hand and they weren't safe to do it. I think reanimating Troll is reckless against my deck with so much exile-based removal and that they should reanimate my frog if they have an option. Okay, they're forcing here. So me getting the first frog is pretty substantial in this matchup. I don't care about troll. I think it's better to go ahead and get the frog. And they're gonna play around days anyway. Yeah, I think it's better to do this. And then we have the potential for a Merktide as a follow-up. Okay, we got our frog. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a way to remove it, but I think if they're willing to fight over it, we're willing to fight over it. They're getting another land. So days would have been terrible there. So I'm glad I pitched it. I can no longer Bowmasters safely, or I can no longer Brainstorm without worrying about Bowmasters here. So Brainstorm might actually get discarded to Psychic Frog in a, in a pinch. If we discard Brainstorm, we could potentially cast a um, Murktide. Okay, so they have their own Frog which is fine. I'm not going to try to fight it on the stack. Their Bowmasters is, or I'm sorry, their Psychic Frog is bigger than mine right now, like potentially. Four cards to three. Okay, I need to find a removal spell stat. Can I find a fetch land? All right, we found a fetch land and we found double Leyline Binding, which, I mean, I'm kind of thinking... This is a little risky to cast because we know they have Borrower in their deck. I do want to keep a second one, though. I think it's more important than keeping a second threat. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and play this out. I'm going to go fetch. If they have a removal spell, that'll be pretty scary. I think getting Savannah here is totally fine. We've got plenty of islands. And I'm going to attempt to remove this. I could definitely like attack and then get them into a blinking, a staring contest. Uh, whatever it's called, like playing chicken with them where we discard cards and stuff and then boom, last second. Oh, that's such a good draw. So if they waste here, I'll be devastated. That'll definitely rock me. The best case scenario is they attempt to re reanimate something. That's the best case scenario right there. All right. And you're going to kill my frog. Engineered explosives for two. That's fine. 
They can't crack it immediately, so I can get another hit in with the Psychic Frog. <sighs> um, we could even potentially remove the uh, Engineering Explosives. I'm kind of like thinking, see what I get. If I find a second White Source, I can do both. Oh, this is so good. Uh, so I think what we do, I mean, this does play into days if they have days. Actually, it's really dangerous if they have days because of Engineered Explosives. The upside is pretty high. We get a card either way. We can fly over their head and connect. I think we want to keep all these cards. And I do think I'm going to go for it here. So I'm going to go green, blue, beanstalk. Okay, draw a card. Now I'm going to lay down mind. We get a card. This is a blue card. If I had attacked first, I would potentially have a force for this? No, I can't do anything about that, unfortunately. Yeah, okay, so um, that sucks. I'm going to exile some cards from our graveyard. Exile land, creature, land. Okay, and then I'm going to attack. If I put a bunch of, if I pitch a bunch of cards, no, it's not worth it because they're going to blow everything up here. We are going to get an extra card. So, oh, carpet's good. Um, it's not great. If they play another land, it'll be great. Cause then we'll have, but I think, you know, Murktide is going to be able to finish them off way faster than troll is going to be able to finish us off. They might even hold this back and let us untap, which would be a huge win because I would 100% cast Leyline Binding. Uh, yeah, they're not going to wait. That's smart. Okay. They didn't even wait to finish combat. All right. What's, what's it going to be? Okay, cool. So here, we could add two. I don't think they're going to be over, able to overpower. Uh, if we add a bunch of blue and we Murktide and we Frog, I think that's going to be enough to win. And then I can just hold up a white mana uh, for potentially plowing in case we get into a dangerous situation. So I want to do this. I'm going to go to combat. Okay, I'm going to use the ability. I'll add blue. So I think the first order of business is getting the uh, frog out. Black. This will bait removal, and then the Murktide is what we really want to resolve because Murktide definitely kills them next turn. So let's go. Um, I think it's worth removing that. One, two, three, four. It's going to be a 7-7. Seven, seven. And... And we have two different ways to potentially remove this. I think it's safer to just let it attack. Ponder's fine. Yeah, I haven't seen anything to suggest that bringing in Orcish Bowmasters is better than the cards we have here. Carpet is doing work here. Okay, and we won. All right, so um, that was the easy one where we were on the play. Let's go to the one that's going to be harder, post-board. So they may have slimmed down on the reanimation package a little bit. Witherbloom could have dealt with the engineered explosives and also recurred us land, but I didn't see any other permanents worth targeting. We still haven't seen animate dead. I think we probably just run it back. Uh, I think cutting a daze is smart here. They haven't seen it, but it, it'll be painful to like bounce it back to our hand. Uh, we could cut or we could introduce a, another Tameo. Or we could potentially bring in the negation. I think negation is the most responsible thing. Yeah. I, hmm. So the, the most scary things to, that they can do are reanimation effects. Yeah, I think negation is correct. All right. Wow. This is a hand. This is high risk, high reward. We've got our best sideboard card. We have exile based removal, which we won't be able to use for a long time. We have our engine. We have Brainstorm. We have the ability to fetch a land. Uh, but we could get completely destroyed if they just explosively, if they just explode, right? So how do we feel about this? They began the game with seven cards in hand. Uh, that could be like Entomb Reanimate, Gristlebrand, for all I know. Um, if it's not, this is solid. We Island and then we Lorien to get the, uh, the Trop. Turn two, we play Trop, we Carpet, we play out Beanstalk, 
Turn three, we have Containment Priest online. That is kind of slow. But it's just, it's so solid against what they're likely doing. Yeah, I'm going to keep it. Call me crazy for not mulling for a force, but, and keeping a one lander against a, a wasteland deck. But, okay, so far, unpunished. I mean, what we could do here, we could just go get an island and we could, uh, no, we can't get an island. So the risk is, I, we have to get an island with this hand. It's irresponsible not to get an island, in my opinion. Unless we draw another land. Okay. That makes me feel a little bit better. I think we island and then we Lauren revealed. That way we we seem to hold up interaction. I don't think they play Stifle. I don't think that they play for, uh, Dark Ritual. So we don't have to worry about opposition agent here. Yeah, I'm just going to do this and then we'll see what they do. But we're almost certainly going to fetch here. I just, I don't think that they play Stifle. If they're playing Stifle... I mean, if they play Stifle, it's the end of the game, though. Yeah, I think I'm going to be a coward. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get an island now. Call me a coward. That's fine. I don't want to lose to, uh, you know, a one of Stifle. Okay. In Tomb. Nothing I can do about it. And unfortunately, if they just have the reanimate, then we're brainstorming and we're hoping to find a force and we're hoping that they don't have. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I've got a blue card to pitch. We did not find it. Uh, that's pretty catastrophic. So this is going to be a very long time before it's useful. I'll redraw this. Actually, I don't even need to redraw these. What I'm going to do here, they're getting a track, so they're getting a bunch of mana, but we can plow it. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, what are the odds that they don't have a daze here? They didn't flip a daze. No, wait, they did. If they put, if they don't put daze into their hand, they probably have a daze. <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we've lost. So they chose daze, psychic frog, animate dead, island, and ponder. So we're gonna take an attack from this either way. Uh, they did get an animate dead, which let's see. So the cards they didn't keep, they didn't keep a fatal push. They didn't keep brainstorm. We could ponder. Yeah. It turns out drawing five cards uh, and getting a 7-7 seven, seven Vigilance, Flying Life, like Death Touch is pretty powerful. Okay, they're going to discard. They discarded the ponder. That means the Daze is still on their deck. Um, I do have the option of Lorne Revealed here. We know what we're drawing, and it's not good stuff. I think we have to Lorne Revealed and... We probably have to get a Tundra so that we can cast these plows because we have to get this out of play. Okay, so I'm going to Lauren Revealed now. This means that like even drawing like a, a Force of Will or anything like that is not going to help me, unfortunately. Uh, if I get Tropical Island and I play it out, they will most certainly daze. So I think this is the turn where we have to like Tundra just to get the dazes out of their hand. We know they have a daze, but we're so constrained on mana. Let's see what we draw here. A Misty. Next turn, we could day we could carpet and days and just not throw anything at days. Um, what I could do is I can end step, go get a surveil land. But they're almost certainly going to reanimate something else. They have an animate dead. There's currently nothing to animate. They may just be holding it for later, but they may have another run to them. Or they might be able to troll cycle. And if they troll cycle, that's not the end of the world. Okay, so we're going to take seven here. What we might want to do is actually just... No, I'm not going to skip casting the carpet. I think that would be too big of a, a misplay. Because we can, if they play a blue source, then we have tons of mana to work with. Entomb. Okay. So yes, this is where they get Gristlebrand. And our ambitions of winning are like so, so dead. I'm going to play it out. I mean, we, we could get in a situation where we were able to remove both of these. I don't think it's likely. They can draw a lot of cards here. They've got, they, they can draw so many cards. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wait and no, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to go ahead and surveil. They're going to have to find a lot of, rem, uh, they have to find at least one days in the top, you know, 14 cards of their deck. 
in addition to the days they have, and that will only stop one of their, uh, I don't need that. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to start with Tundra, which makes Mystic Sanctuary live next turn, and I'm gonna attempt to carpe here. They're gonna fight this with everything they have. Yes. I don't think it's correct to respond here because they can just gain the life and do it again. They've got 19 cards in hand. I'll pay for your days. Do you have a second days? Unfortunately, this also makes our carpet less useful. Uh, I feel like we have to pay for this. Yeah, we're dead. Because the next turn, they're going to be able to attack. Like, If we pay for this, then we get one one white, and they're, they have the days for it. So, yeah, they won. That was, was handle, handily beaten by reanimation, uh, even post-grief ban. All right, so I'm going to go pick my kids up from school, take them to the park, and uh, when we get back, we will continue and do rounds three through five. We are one and one. All right, we're back for round three. We're one and one, and we are up against Megoavil, a player who I couldn't find any MPGO history for. This hand is pretty good in the blind. We've got an island ponder keep. We would need to find another land, but this, uh, the good luck, have fun, like, I never have a combo player <laughs> say good luck, have fun before I can say it. Uh, maybe that's uh, maybe that's incorrect vibes, but this seems good, and I'm going to keep it. So if they just turn one chalice me, I will be in catastrophic trouble. But if it's not a turn one chalice, if it's something else, all right, there we go. Looks like a, I mean, this could be like a doomsday build, but I think most likely it's just like a fair uh, tempo, blue-black tempo deck. We'll see. I would say fair blue-black tempo is probably the most popular deck to be playing right now uh recording this the day after grief got banned all right they're passing after uh going underground sea ponder and i think we're probably unless we draw a land here we're probably gonna also do that actually this kind of makes me want to just play out the underground sea, uh, the tundra and then have lorian revealed up yeah i think this is better because i'm not gonna want to um i'm not gonna want to Get wasted off of Tundra. Ponder can miss. Lorien revealed can't miss. There is a risk that they have uh, Stifle here, but they didn't play out a Wasteland, so I'm feeling pretty good. Looks like they might have a Bowmasters. I'm going to go get an Underground Sea here. Am I going to get an Underground Sea? Underground Sea does cast, uh, cast Psychic Frog. I think that's better. Yeah, I'll get an Underground Sea. All right, we draw a Murktide. Not the greatest of draws. Um, so we have several options. I think the best option here is to just go ahead and ponder and then be ready to uh, plow. the the. Uh, oh, so they don't have it. Okay, these are good cards. I would like to find a third land. I don't have a way to shuffle. I'm just going to shuffle now. There, that's a good draw. All right, so we have some mana up. We can brainstorm in an emergency. We need to find a force, but I don't think we're likely going to need to find a force. I'm just not sure why they're not casting anything here. Okay, they're brainstorming. I think that there is a possibility that they're on like Doomsday, Blue Black. That Doomsday is probably the most likely Blue Black combo because all they've done is cast cantrips. They haven't put any threats on the table. No Nether Goyfs, no Tamios. If we get a vibe that they are on Doomsday, I'll be very happy to put these two plows back. Witherbloom Command is actually extremely strong against Doomsday because it can mess up their piles and potentially like mill through their win conditions and cause them to lose the game. They could be on Bug Beanstalk. That's another uh, another thing they could be doing, like a lower creature count. I think the card I'm most worried about here is Wasteland. Hopefully they don't have a Wasteland. Okay, so... Now I'm thinking they're on Storm because the, the only deck I've ever seen that plays this deck is Storm. So I'm kind of in the market for a Wasteland myself uh, to, you know, to potentially cut them off of uh, Veil of Summer. I don't think they're likely to cast Veil of Summer here, though. All right. I, I don't think we can wait any longer. Uh, I think the white cards are probably completely dead, and I would love to find a... Way to shuffle these away. 
All right, that is a way to shuffle them away, but we didn't find a land. So what I think we do is we put this back. We put this back. I, I just get the vibe that they're completely creatureless. And now I'm going to attempt to ponder here. I'm going to shuffle this. Okay, we found a land. It's not like a great situation. They can go off next turn with impunity. I don't want to put this in the graveyard because I don't want to reveal what we're up to. Because like this looks like a lot of potential decks maybe. I don't know actually. It probably just looks like a four color control, five color control beanstalk deck. Veil. So they're proactively casting Veil. Maybe they were baiting. No, they weren't baiting. They actually have uh, probably the win here. Game two and game three will be a lot easier now that we know that we're on. We can ditch a whole lot of... Um, I'm not going to F6 here because I don't want them to think they get a free ride. I want them to be worried about like... I don't know, actually, there's nothing I could have here because they veiled. Sometimes these decks just hit their fail rate. Um, they have so much mana. They put Song of Creation behind there, so it looks like they're on straight uh, Epic Storm. Yeah, there wasn't anything that I saw or that I drew that could have prepared me for this. I said at the beginning, like, no Storm player or combo player ever says, good luck, have fun, before I'm able to say it, because I'm pretty fast to say that at the beginning of the game. Uh, but I was wrong. I got the I got the wrong read here. So I'm going to let them resolve this. Again, I'm still not F6ing because I want them to think that I have some sort of interaction. Guys will. Okay. They have a deterministic line here. Uh, they should have sacked. Oh, they they did sa they sacked the LED with the uh, guys will on the line. Okay, I'm gonna let I'm gonna go ahead and let them combo out just to give them a chance to screw up. I don't think they're likely to. Dark ritual. They should beseech here, and they can just go get tendrils and win. Yeah, they forgot to embed anything under Chrome Box, or they I I guess they didn't have anything in hand to embed. Okay, so yeah, they're just beseeching, and this should be tendrils lethal here. All right, I'm just gonna concede. We don't need to make them click through that. We are not going to win on clocks here against Storm. Okay. The good news is th this will be a fast, fast matchup, so I don't really need to worry as much about clock as just worry about the correct plays here. Uh, this is a rare situation where Damping Sphere is actually really good. Um, I was mainly bringing this in for uh, 12 post because I haven't played against Storm in a long time. So I didn't see a single red card. I presume they have Burning Wish in there. Consigned to memory does stop storm triggers. It can also counter um, artifacts. I mean, the fact that they're totally creatureless really does give us like a ton of options as far as what we take out. I think we take out the plows for sure. I think even if they do have um, a card like Psychic Frog, it, it's not worth risking them just... Um, I mean, we've got lots of other cards that can potentially deal with Psychic Frog, like our own Psychic Frogs. Wither Bloom Command is not the worst. It can gain its life, putting Storm Victory farther out of reach. Ley, Ley Line Binding is pretty bad. It can get rid of anything, but it comes down so late. Um, we just need to cut two cards. I'm not convinced that Hydroblast or Orcish Bowmasters are great here. What we want to do is not get them through uh, like an early Orcish Bowmasters. What we want to do is... Um, get control, get the cards on the table, and win that way. And a Murktide and a Psychic Frog will do that. Tamiyo is pretty weak here, frankly. Like, we're not going to be able to race. I, I almost kind of think we cut her completely because the, well, okay. So in the extremely unlikely chance that they go for a um, empty the warrants, this is good. Yeah, I don't think we bring it in. I think Hydroblast is better uh and i am going to cut the tamios i just think that attacking and taking up a tamio uh i mean it is going to be uncontested though maybe we keep one just in case um pernicious deed very limited in its usability i mean i i kind of want to get rid of leyline what can leyline leyline can get rid of like their carpets and other things that they might try to do i'm gonna cut one leyline and I'm going to run it like this. This probably isn't like fully correct, but I just like the volume of blue cards. I like the uh, the Lavinia and Damping Sphere, which is basically a lights out type card. I don't want to completely get rid of Witherbloom because we could get a couple waste uh, Wastelands off. 
this is a really good hand uh, if they don't turn one us. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn one. Uh, I'm going to turn one ponder. And hope to find a force. And then uh, we'll have island uh, fetch land up. If we need to use that. This is really good. So I don't want the second wither bloom, but I do want beanstalk. And most importantly, I want this day. So we have some interaction. Okay. So what I'll likely do is next turn, I'll take the beanstalk and I'll flood the strand and I'll play out Lavinia because Lavinia is just super powerful in this matchup. That's fine. Sometimes they hold their Moxin and in the situations where they hold Moxin, uh, Lavinia is super good. Lavinia does shut off uh, Moxon LED. It shuts off uh, being able to cast the card that they get off of Beseech. And their deck doesn't play a lot of removal. They might be playing some removal with the preponderance of uh, Psychic Frogs. But I think most likely they're not going to have a quick and easy way to remove Lavinia. Okay, they could be going for a turn one here. If they do turn one us, all we have to protect ourselves is a daze. That's it. Okay, thank goodness. I was so worried. All right. Well, I think we just play Lavinia. Lavinia is so strong that uh, it is important to note that Lavinia, um, if no mana is spell, counter it. So they can play through a Lavinia um, by, here, I'm going to get this so I can go up the Beanstalk next turn. They can play through Lavinia with um, Veil of Summer. Okay, wow, they just conceded to that. That's great. So we know that our um, our silver bullet type cards are like lights out here. Now we have to win on the draw. I don't think our game plan changes. We just aggressive, more aggressively mulligan for a force effect. I don't think we board out Witherbloom. Witherbloom is a non-blue card, and we're going to want to maximize our blue cards that are impactful. So I think maybe we bring a second Tameo in. Leyline Binding just feels so bad. I'm just trying to think of situations where it's good. Um, if we pull up the current Epic Storm list, the Epic Storm list, deck list archives, there, we should be able to find like the most recent deck list. In here, all right, you're not gonna just show it somewhere. Uh, deck list, okay. This should be the deck list. Okay, great. Three Besiege, three Echoes. Guys will uh, Galvanic Relay. So I do think it's right to bring in the Hydros, assuming they're playing this list. Commercial District, Song of Creation. Every card is a card we've seen in here. Um, I don't, I, I think it's possible they have Echo. Yeah, don't really see much to kill other than Moxon. Uh, so I think it's fine to take out Witherbloom completely. And I mean, Tameo is some forward pressure. Bowmaster is also pressure. I think Tameo is better just because it pitches to force and we want to make sure we have blue cards to pitch to force. Yeah. So we're going to run it like this. Yeah. In terms of cards to exile, I mean, yeah, we could get a song of creation, but if song of creation resolves, something catastrophic has happened. This is a great hand. Uh, I'm going to pause for a minute just to, uh, make them think I'm thinking about keeping a difficult hand, but this is not a difficult hand to keep. Like, Consign to memory, single-handedly stop storm. Uh, I think turn two, we don't wait. We just try to resolve a, a psychic frog and try to go to town with that. Uh, and psychic frog, I'm not going to be pitching cards to it. So there, I'm going to make it seem like I thought really hard. <laughs> you, you, uh, there are situations where you want to just snap keep, like, oh, snap keep. If you have a weak hand, uh, and then that might make them, but you have to be careful because it's not worth accidentally keeping a suboptimal hand uh, just because you want to like play some mind game with them. But in situations where you have a strong keep, I still think you should probably stall just a bit. Okay. All right. I think here we go ahead and play this out because it wouldn't be the worst if we could get a surveillance and we do play, I think two surveillance in our list. We'll see when we fetch. Okay. They're fetching. They're going to get, uh, if they get a commercial district, that means they're closer to going for it. Okay. So this means this is just like a business as usual type land that they're always going to want to fetch. Fetch lands have been a huge windfall to the Epic Storm. 
in terms of just giving them a lot of additional selection for very little cost. All right. So is there thought seizing? I'm just going to let this happen. Uh, I don't think it's worth... They're going to probably take force of will and then they'll see that we have a consigned to memory. Um, yeah, it could, because if I brainstorm here, uh, I take myself off consigned to memory and they get the ability to uh, kind of go off with uh, with abandon. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a better word than that. Uh, with impunity because I won't have consigned to memory up. But with consigned to memory up, I can... Uh, deterministically stop a storm line. Consign memory is really good. Okay, they took this consign. That's great. Uh, it could mean that they just have a... Um, okay, I'm going to surveil here. I'm going to pitch second frog most likely. So I do think it's better to get some surveil action here than it is to get Xander's Lounge, especially since we boarded out most of our leyline bindings. This is a great card. I'm going to keep it. In fact, I'm probably going to just go up the Beanstalk rather than cast Psychic Frog here. Huh. Yeah, if I go up the Beanstalk, that does make our force stronger, but it also means that, yeah, uh, because I, I could draw in a second force. This is like basically two looks at a force. The ETB of the Beanstalk itself, and then um, when I force, I'll get another card. Okay, Commercial District. Here, let's see if they surveil to the graveyard. We want them to do that. Okay, interesting tendrils is in the graveyard, so they are probably going to need a graveyard strategy or they're going to need a burning with here, wish here. Okay, so um, now I think we're pretty safe to go ahead and attempt to resolve a Psychic Frog. So I'm going to go get a land. I like this better than uh, attempting to... There's no reason to leave up white. I'll just do like this and I'll leave this up, maybe think, making them think that I'm playing Veil, which is a card I could very much be playing. So I'm going to try to find several opportunities to leave this up to make them think I, I've drawn a Veil. Um, they don't play any sort of days. Maybe it is better to go ahead and ponder here because if we can find another force, that's really good. I don't think they have any way of punishing this. Lavinia is probably lights out next turn. Leyline Binding is you know a draw trigger so i think what we do is we put lavinia down here and this is probably going to scare them a little bit like they might be scared but you know actually i'm not worried about like lavinia coming down i'm worried about just getting through this turn because i've got psychic frog i'm gonna shuffle oh wow that was that was such a good shuffle okay so i think we've probably won uh, they would have to have an incredible hand to get through double force with a beanstalk out. That's fine. So we're just going to hope they use up their mana and sculpt. Yeah, I'm so glad I shuffled that. Because Lavinia, I mean, very well could end the game next turn, but they could very well end the game this turn, in which case next turn doesn't matter. Finding that force, I mean, we were okay to find any force, but the fact that we found a force of will and not just a force of negation is like doubly good. So I will probably hold on to Brainstorm and I'll pitch Frog and Ponder here uh, as necessary. They are certainly aware that the window is closing for them and that they need to be quick. Okay, they're passing. Wow. Yeah, I think at this point we can probably play out Psychic Frog number two and just slam the door. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play Mystic Sanctuary. Mystic Sanctuary is going to get back consigned to memory. Again, deterministic stop on uh, Storm. So they can no longer realistically win through Storm unless they're able to um, hit me somehow. I think I can go ahead and play this out. we got plenty of mana up. Yeah. I'm not going to ponder. I'm going to use the ponder with the force. So I've got double, double force, double blue card plus consign. And next turn, I think the game will be over if they don't win by then because we're going to be drawing two cards. And really all we need to do, like at least in my experience, unless I'm like completely misreading uh, this matchup, I've played this a lot, by the way. I probably played against Storm with a Beanstalk deck, I don't know, 50 times. Maybe, maybe not 50, maybe like 30. It's one of the most common matchups I encounter that in like Doomsday. 
This is fine. Again, we just want them to use their mana on things like brainstorms and not use their mana on things like burning wish or, you know, the scariest card in their deck is absolutely um, veil of summer. They could have two, but even if they have two veil of summer here, we're still going to be able to consign to memory the um, tendrils. Veil doesn't stop consign. I would be totally terrified to queue into, um, I mean, with the current state of legacy, I would I would be absolutely terrified to play against. Okay, this is an easy force here, in my opinion. We just, there's no reason to give them the option to get something good here. So I'm going to go ahead and pitch Ponder first. And they don't have a veil up. Oh, that's lights out. Yeah, so I mean, the game is still going on, but it's very much over in my opinion. Like I think when we put Damping Sphere on the stack here, our opponent will concede. Because they're going to need... Okay, they're not conceding, but... I don't know what's in their hand. All I know is I'm drawing two cards. I have Force of Will. I have Consigned to Memory. Everything we want to do to to build up Storm is going to cost them a fortune in mana. I will go ahead and play this out. I'm just going to take my time. I, I don't feel any urgency at all here. Lines Eye Diamond is fine. Now they had to pay an extra mana to cast the second Lines Eye Diamond. Had to pay two mana for a Lotus Petal. They're really, uh, I, I guess they're playing this out in preparation for a bigger turn later. But they are giving me the ability to just swing in. I am going to go ahead and grab my um, my ETB tap land just so I don't draw it later. If I can somehow um, lay land bind one of their LEDs, that'll be great. Uh, I can flip Tamio here. <laughs> I'll play out a Tamio. I'm just going to attack with everything. And you may be thinking, why don't you just discard some cards and end the game? But um, I don't think it's necessary. Okay, Lavinia. So this is... Yep. Uh, okay, Tamio flips. I am going to play a Lavinia. So I'm going to have to pay three mana for Lavinia, though. I don't think we're super vulnerable, though. I'm trying to think of what what bad could happen. They've got three lands. Blue, white, and we're just going to play Lavinia out. And we'll pass. Again, we have Force. We, have, uh, we don't actually have Force and can sign up anymore. But with Lavinia and Damping Sphere, I just think their ability to go off is so restricted. Next turn, I will regrow one of the forces from my graveyard. And we are getting to the point where I can basically just discard my hand um, and win. Uh, that's fine. They're going to immediately have to use up one of those mana. I'm trying to even think of how they win with three lands because Lavinia prevents them from casting most spells that they would be able to cast. Yeah, the hate is too strong. Good games. Well, uh, we won against Storm. Let's go to round uh, four. And we are 2-1. All right, we are back for round four, most likely against Eldrazi. The player is Bazaar of Baghdadi. Have to appreciate the silly um, kind of dad joke name. Uh, and it looks like they may be on kind of like the, yeah, the Yavamaya. This is the Japanese list. Man, this is going to be brutal. Uh, this is the one that optimizes for getting a very quick um, sewing micro spawn. Uh, so that they can, and, and the way they can do that on turn three is with a combination of Eye of Ugin and Yavamaya. So, yeah, it's going to be hard. Let's see what we can do here. This is, I mean, I would say, by the way, sorry, that art asset is not loading in the frames. Good luck, have fun. Okay, this will be a lot of fun if you're on Aldrazi. Um, I actually think that we keep this just because it does have a beanstalk, it has a plow, um, there's no point really in playing on basics if they're going to exile our land anyway. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fetch my colors and hope to uh, set myself up for an early, yeah, it looks like they're likely on Eldrazi here. I'm just going to try to set myself up for an early beanstalk into hopefully like Leyland Binding would be good. So Eldrazi Temple revealed. So if they don't have Cavern of Souls, we're not in the worst position, but we're not in a great position. I don't think we ponder here. We've got everything we need. 
We just need to survive. Also, my MTGO client is like really slow and clunky, even though I just did a full restart. So I'm not sure why, but if if you're noticing that it's super slow, that's why. Okay, Blast Zone doesn't really... I mean, it could blow up our Beanstalk and a Psychic Frog, so it could potentially two for one us here. Um, I think we hold. If we hold, we do have ways of removing this. And if we hold, uh, we increase the likelihood that we're going to be able to uh, force drawing a card. I'll be back. I'm F6 on your turn. Okay, well, thanks for letting us know. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, grab a Hedge Maze here so we can surveil immediately any one drops. I think that's good. I'm going to keep that. It's a blue card for force. So I am going to start with Beanstalk and then go into Psychic Frog. Aren't I? Yeah, I think the upside of being able to uh, have Beanstalk in play is is worth it. So I'll just go ahead and get my Underground Sea here. The next turn, I can get the um, the Tundra. The Tundra is the most important land. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I could have just gotten Tundra here. I'm not going to be using the mana for anything other than this Beanstalk. Okay, wow. Another force. Super duper aggressive. I would love to basically just deplete their hand. Okay, so they're going to be back in like five minutes. All right, and uh, as we feared, Sewing Microspawn is coming in. Uh, they're going to be able to search for a card. I think we see what they get, and then I am definitely considering forcing this just so, because I don't have an easy way to remove it, and I want my Psychic Frog to get in for damage. Also worth noting that um, they can potentially blast on bo both my uh, up the Beanstalk and my Psychic Frog. So, oh, man, yeah, that's a good card. I think we force it. I just... They don't, so let's say we force it. We have plenty of cards to pitch the force. Um, they have one, two, three, four, five, six potentially mana. Let's take a look at their list that they were playing last time. So they don't really have any high curve stuff. Thought I'd see your they do have, oh, they actually, they have four Devourer of Destiny. That is something I'd probably like to force Again, it's going to be something... They have Null Drifter. Um, I th the main concern I have is, let's say that, okay, we don't force... Next turn, we play Psychic Frog. They can just take up and they can blow up our Psychic Frog after one connection. That's pretty bad. I think the way we dig out of this is we get a... Um, we work toward a Murktide. I'm going to pitch this dead card here and I'm going to counter that so we can draw a card. Okay, this doesn't really help us does take some of the pressure off temporarily. Okay, we're getting a lot of lands here. I think we I think we do pitch Psychic Frog because I'm worried about casting Psychic Frog. Let's see. They could add a counter to this. I mean, that would be like two turn cycles. They put a charge counter on it, and then the next turn, they blow it. They can't do both in the same cycle. Um, and in the meantime, there's a chance we'll be able to force something. Also, this can potentially buy back a spell later. So I think uh, I am going to go ahead and play this out. Like being able to force like a Coslix command or something would be really good. This will most likely grab. Uh, I am deathly afraid that they're going to be able to uh, Sewing Micro Spawn again, though. That would be so catastrophic. Sewing Micro Spawn, I think, is the, if they're going to ban a card out of the Eldrazi shell, it should probably be this. This card is just so ridiculously good. I love the art. It almost looks kind of like yummy, like a cake with that like pink frosting stuff on it. Uh, I don't know. I spent too much time waiting for my opponents to decide what to do and too much time looking at this delicious art here. Okay, it looks like they're not taking a turn off. Oh, yeah, they are freaking doing the thing. I mean, luckily we have lots of land, but still this sucks. Let's see what land they get. If they get a wasteland, I think I probably have to force just to like try to. Because what I can do is I can potentially dig out of this. Um, and my thinking of digging out of it is connecting with Psychic Frog, dumping several cards into it. Okay, they did get the wasteland. I think I am going to force this just because they're not playing. Yeah, at any turn time. Okay, that's a terrible draw. Um. 
I could, uh, yeah, I was thinking like, oh, I can bounce it back to my hand, but that's actually not good. I want them to, I actively want them to waste here. Okay, so one thing I could do is I could attempt to plow here and hold priority before the counter, and then I could bounce it back to hand. I don't think that's a good use of two cards. I think it's better. I think it's fine. So what I'm going to do here in step is I'm going to go get the one that gives me lots of colors in case I do happen to find. Um, yeah, I'm going to get Xander's Lounge. It, and ETB is tapped. It's a terrible land. Uh, but it does help me ah, so bad. Okay, so let's say hypothetically we dump all our cards into this. The, we could get in two attacks. I think our entire land, our entire hand is terrible. So I, th I do think I'm actually going to dump my entire hand into this. We're not going to be able to kill them, but we will potentially be able to get them low. I mean, they have an onboard answer to this, but our plows are not doing anything. This Mystic Sanctuary is terrible. It's going to be an ATB tap land no matter what we do. So we're going to do five here. We're going to get a card. Witherbloom command. Well, that blows up this and it gets us the land back. That's pretty freaking good. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now. So let's go black, green, Witherbloom. I'm going to blow up the chalice. And uh, I mean, alternatively, I could drain life. I think chalice... Um, I think the ability to rip like cantrips and actually be able to cast them is worth it though. I don't think the two life differential is going to be that big. So we get rid of that. I'm going to get back a wasteland and then we can't waste now, but next turn we could waste either the eye of Ugin or if they invest in the blast stone, we can waste that. Just like that. I feel like this game might be competitive. I could be totally wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're not quite to casting uh, the ending guy, whatever his name is. One, two, three, four. Coslix command. That sucks. So I think we're going to be wasting the eye here. They're going to be able to. So exile and, and they get to draw a card. They get to surveil. Um, and they get to surveil for a lot. So they're looking at um, four. So they can look at four cards and they can decide which four they want to keep. Terrifying. I don't think we're winning anymore. There's a brief moment where it felt like we might be able to win. Yeah, now we're definitely not winning. Uh, they, they should probably take us off this. Another. Yeah, this is just brutal. Uh, oh, Chalice is not the end. Uh, I mean, I could just like rip a Murktide and Murktide is so big that it could actually end the game potentially. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to hit the eye just because it represents their ability to search and get card advantage. They kept only one of their top. So they still have, they, they're, they're drawing unknown cards now. Eldrazi Repurposer gives them a couple of one tokens. These aren't really that scary unless they have the uh, Harbinger of the End. What, what is the name of the card? Okay, so they're doing something else scary here. Uh, so they're exiling that. That sucks. Um, and they've got five power on the table. All right. We can still Merc Tide. We can still win because they got greedy and they didn't waste us. That's not what we want to see. I think here we take them off Wasteland take them off Aldrazi, Aldrazi Temple, that does set their mana back quite a bit. They waste us. We still have uh, Murktide mana. And Murktide will be a full-size boy. Okay, we're taking five. That's fine. All right. Murktide. I'm going to play this out. I'm not going to wait. We have one more turn to draw Murktide. And even if we draw Murktide, it's not going to be Everything we need, we'll need uh, two consecutive Merc Tides, I think. Well, that's a dead draw from them, which, yeah, Merc Tide. Leyland Binding doesn't do it. I'm going to concede. Yeah, we can't actually cast that with our current mana base. Okay. So sideboarding here, I think uh, it's good that we have lots of removal. 
I think this is a, maybe a damping sphere matchup. Sorry again, like the graphics. Like I know people are just like just reboot and it fixes it. It's not that simple on Mac. Um, I've tried it several times. Uh, I will uh, figure out how to fix it, but I didn't want to like spend half an hour that I could spend playing fixing it. So thanks for your patience with the uh, weird ghost card frames. Um, Days is terrible. I think we bring that out. Lavinia doesn't actually stop them from doing anything. It makes their, um, I mean, it does make Kha'Zix Command weaker, but it's like, it seems like a pretty weak card. I don't like Orcish Bowmasters. I don't like boarding in more counter magic. Pernicious Deed is actually pretty weak because they don't have a ton of permanents to target. In terms of cards that are not super duper strong from our side of the table, I mean, Tamiya is not the worst uh, because she does take up. She gives us permanents that we can sack to like an old, an old drifter. Um, I think Leyline is essential, even though they're going to be going after our mana hardcore. We saw last game. Witherbloom Command gets us land back. It blows up Moxon, it or it blows up uh, Chalice. Potentially gains us life. I, I don't want to take Witherbloom out. It is a hard card to resolve, though. It especially sucks that like they're exiling our um, cards. I am wondering whether Damping Sphere is actually good here, because Damping Sphere. Um, it does reduce like the mana that some of their cards produce, but yeah, I don't think Damping Sphere is right here. I think it's really just like the 12 post that we care about it for. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm not sure that it's the right card for the matchup. So we just need to make one cut. I think the cut will be probably a Tamiya just because she's the weakest single card in here in the matchup. She doesn't do a lot other than uh, accumulate clues and potentially flip and it will be very difficult to defend her in this situation, especially considering that she can be exiled pretty easily by uh, the seven drop. This is a hand with force of will. It's got lands. I think we keep it and we try to establish like a Leyland binding mana base. So what I'm going to do here is I'll probably open with yeah, devour destiny. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. So I'm just going to play this out. And we can potentially fetch a Surveillant here. If we fetch Surveillant, the next turn we could Witherbloom Command, depending on what they do. That'll get us back a land, keep the forward momentum, uh, potentially blow up a card that they play out. Like, I'm not above blowing up uh, a Lotus Petal. Let's see how many cards they keep and how many cards they exile here. Okay, wow, they exiled these? What the heck? Did, uh, they must be really low on lands. Okay, yeah, that's that's a pretty weak start, all in all. So I'm going to try to look for a Wasteland. If we can find Wasteland, we will be so happy because that is kind of like an incidental way that you can waste somebody out of the game or, or that you can beat Eldrazi. It's just wasting them out of the game. I don't need this. I'll put it in my graveyard as Murktide food. I actually think that I'm going to ponder here. Hmm. I could brainstorm here instead and then fetch it away. But if I ponder into a um, wasteland, I'm going to want to keep it. They don't have Chalice, otherwise they almost certainly would have just played it out there. I mean, these are so good. I can't really turn them down, though. Um, so what I think we do is we don't need this. We take Psychic Frog now, and then we have up the Beanstalk. And we just have to decide which one we want to play out. I'll go ahead and play this. So I don't want to get rid of Beanstalk, especially not when I have Force of Will in hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until I draw and then I'll fetch Underground Sea. Okay, so they do have their four mana. I'll definitely force the Thought Knots here. Glaring Flesh Raker. We can bind that. They have one mana floating. How dangerous is it to... Uh... Okay, so here's what I could do. Next turn, I could... No, because I need to... Uh... I'm trying to think, what is the worst that could happen here? They don't have uh, Eye of Ugin in play, so I think this is the last card they're going to be able to cast this turn. So I don't think they're going to be able to get any Glaring Flesh Raker triggers. I could be wrong. I think it's worth it to let that resolve and wait and to force until after I have uh, Beanstalk out. 
Okay. Six cards left in hand, four mana. Very scary. I do think the correct play here is to go ahead and get Beanstalk online. I'm trying to think if there's a way. Yeah, there's no way that I can uh, both Beanstalk and Leyland Bind, and I do need the Leyland Bind. So options are one, uh, Brainstorm, and maybe find a, a Plow. But that means that we will have difficulty. So I'll, I'll have to go get uh, Savannah instead of getting a... Because um, I'll need green to go up the beanstalk. I do. I really do want to find a plow here. Maybe I should have just forced. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, brainstorm. Okay, we didn't find what we need. Actually, the second... Um, it's not the worst. Here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and play the second land out. I'm going to go ahead and fetch. I'm going to get a Xander's Lounge. And then I'm going to fetch again. I'm going to get a Savannah. And I'm going to go ahead and just play at the Leyland Binding now. It sucks, but uh, um, we need to get this off the table. It's too powerful. All right. And we have Force in Emergency, but again, I don't want to use it. If they attempt to Thought Nuts here, I'll probably just let it resolve. Because then they'll have to choose between Beanstalk and Second Frog. Wow, they didn't play that out last turn, and they could have. So this is where um, their card comes down, and it gets it blows this away as it's XL. And then, <laughs> wow, I did not anticipate them having this much freaking mana. Oh no, this is bad too. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well that I mean, the good news is we already cast the Leyland Binding, so it's not quite as brutal. We have some degree of redundancy. I don't think they're going to leave us with any mana here. And unfortunately, like forcing here doesn't even really matter because the sewing micro spawn, which is a 3 3 body, um, I think we need the force for later spells. And if we draw a land and we go do go up the beanstalk, then uh, we're going to be happy that we held our force. They have so much mana and they have their next turn, they can play the. Um, Okay, this is a land, but it doesn't help us. I'm playing it out, though, and I'll pass. There's nothing I can do here. We'll happily take three from Sowing Microspawn to reserve the ability to stop, like, the much larger creatures. But I think what they're probably going to do, I'm surprised they didn't play Devourer or Destiny there because they had it in their hand. Eight mana available. Crazy. Chalice for one. I'm not going to stop that. I can potentially kill that with Witherbloom later in the game if there is a later in the game. I'm just happy that they haven't ruined my Leyland Binding yet. <laughs> I think it's a, just a matter of time. Best draw on our deck is absolutely um, consigned to memory, probably. Okay, Beanstalk. I'm just going to play the Beanstalk, and I'm sure it's not going to do a lot here, but if I can get a land, that'll be good. If you can get a land. It's another blue card to go with Force. So we have double Force up under Beanstalk, which is good. We may be able to use that to draw to a land, but if they cast this, uh, wait, they don't have to like the de XL devour uh, or anything like it's just chilling in their hand, right? I don't know why they haven't cast it yet. That is a total mystery to me. Okay. If they get low enough, uh, we can potentially alpha strike with Murtide. Here it is. This is what I was waiting for. They're going to be able to get glaring flesh Raker back. Okay, so yeah, this card is just, it does too many things. But the real card is this. This is the one that is on my, uh, now Now that we, uh, we can stop talking about bands, let's start talking about bands on freaking Sewing Micro Spawn. Okay, so I'm going to pitch this blue card. I if, if I don't get rid of that, I'm dead basically on board. It's interesting that they didn't go for Glaring Flesh Raker. I think Glaring Flesh Raker is better there. Oh, I should have freaking forced while the ability was on the stack. I didn't get the card. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that was a total misplay. I lost it out on a card. Uh, Merktide could still do it. I'm going to go ahead and do this just to see what we draw. Okay, Merktide. All right. So we have Force. We have Merktide. Um, of course, they could just uh, Sewing Micro Spawn to destroy all our lands. All right. So they're going to get their hit in here. The great news is even though they have a ton of mana, Murktide 
its casting cost is so large, the Kozlik commanding it is prohibitive. It, it would cost nine mana to Kozlik command it away. Wow, they're going to four. They have another one. A Null Drifter. So unfortunately, I can't stop the draw triggers. I will go ahead and force with that on the stack just because. I'll pitch that just because I don't want that body out there. Okay, Tamiya doesn't do anything here. They get a couple cards, which is scary. They're so low in life, though. I think Murktide can get us there. Cradle. Okay, wow. All right. Let's see if we can do it with Murktide. Uh, actually, this is pretty good because we can gain some life back. We can blow up their uh, chalice. And then we can Murktide. And uh, it's not going to give it any extra power. I think it's worth doing, though. I'm going to go get an underground sea here. I don't think there's anything wrong with this play. Green, black, witherbloom. This will cut the, down the amount of mana they can use next turn. Um, I think instead of going after Chalice, I'm just going to go after their life total. I'm trying to think if there's any value in even milling myself. I don't think there is. Uh, I do want the life. Destroy target, non-creature permanent. Um, do I want to do that? So there's a possibility that I, that I mill a wasteland. I've already cast my, uh, I played my land for the turn. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'm overthinking this. Uh, milling myself does give me outs in case they are able to bounce this with that uh, creature that bounces things, wastescape. Okay, I will return a, what do I want to get back? I think I just get a tropical island because it's a painless land. And then blue, blue, Murktide. One, two, three, four, five. Blue, blue. I should have uh, left the, uh, here we get a card off of this. All right, uh, had I blown up Chalice, I would have had access to Brainstorm next turn but it was worth it more to like reduce the amount of mana they can produce here. They can't tap Ancient Tomb. I don't know how they get rid of this. They may have some sort of, see, they can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but that would be death if they were to try to cast the um, Devourer of Destiny. So I think I may have won this round. This this uh, game, I think there's a, there's a third game, right? Okay, they played Yavimaya, which actually does allow them to tap those painlessly. So they may have enough mana to uh, Kozlik's command here. If they do, the game's definitely over. Like, Okay, this is the Battle Mage. Okay, they're killing that. They're getting back Flesh Raker. This is scary. So this enters play. Now they get a token. I take a damage. They have Cradle Mana up. I... So terrifying, man. This deck is terrifying to play against. I mean, yeah, that's fine. I take another damage. They don't, I don't think they play the hasty creature. They could play that uh, repurposer guy and get two, two pings off that. That's a lot of mana. I have to assume they have some line here that wins. Kozlik's command. That is, is that enough X equals? Oh, that's just going to put so many spawn tokens into play that I die anyway. So frustrating. Like I, I really, I don't know if I could have done anything differently. Blowing up the chalice uh, wouldn't have done anything. I didn't need the life here. Um, but yeah, I'm dead. That's frustrating. Uh, I don't like playing against this deck. I think I've made that opinion abundantly clear here, so I'll, I'll shut up. But um, yeah. Yeah, we didn't even take a game there. All right, welcome back for round five, the redemption round. We are two and two after losing to Eldrazi. Uh, we have no idea what our opponent's on. This hand does have Tamiyo uh, Brainstorm Flip. I think what we could do is we could just open with a fetch and take it slow. I do want to Brainstorm back this uh, Mystic Sanctuary, but other than that, our hand looks great. I'm going to keep this. We are on the play. They mulligan to six. Okay, so they did mulligan to six, which is a little troubling because uh, fair decks don't usually have to mulligan. But, I mean, they could have just had bad luck. 
We could ponder for a force here. I do think the best option is just to keep our options open and uh, have the abilities to surveil. A lot of combo decks are not turn one combo decks, like that Storm deck we beat earlier. It was like a, more of like a turn three, turn four deck. Flood is Rand. Pass. I like it. Let's see if they stifle me. I'm fine with them stifling me. I've got a lot of some mana sources. Okay. I'm going to get my Hedge Maze. Just see if I can line up, uh, you know, a good card like that. <laughs> That's a pretty, pretty damn good card. All right. So they could definitely have a daze here. I think we want to be the aggressor here. I think playing Tamio and having Brainstorm to Flipper is not as powerful as just playing out this Beanstalk. Not going to play on Basics. Uh, I mean, Underground Sea is actually better here because we can Psychic Frog next turn. It is a chore, kind of like having uh, four different colors of mana that you have to manage. If this enters play, I'll be very happy, but it looks like it's going to get dazed here. Okay, white. Interesting. Brainstorm. Okay. Again, pardon the uh, borderless <laughs> brainstorm. That I, I will restart, um, but I, I didn't want to keep restarting because sometimes like I just restarted and it didn't fill in correctly. All right, so uh, we're going to go up the beanstalk. That's a great feeling. Okay, and another Tameo. Not really what we're going to see, but Tundra is not a combo color. Like They could be playing something like uh, Stifle Knot, Wasteland. Okay. I'm definitely getting Stifle Knot vibes here. They're taking out our Black Source. Ponder. There are some blue-white like Vile decks, kind of like Esper Vile decks that are floating around. I think we want to go ahead and ponder here because really anything is better. I mean, we could brainstorm here and then uh, potentially shuffle the brainstorm with uh, Sanctuary. It'll be interesting to see if they daze here. If we don't find a fetch, we find a fetch. Okay, good. Never didn't have it, right? Um, I think we keep the days here just because their mana is pretty low. We could put back Renuna Tambio. Play this out. Um, because they are playing, well, we don't actually know that they're playing days, but they are playing Wasteland, so I'm going to presume they're playing days. We could just go ahead and ponder now. If we go Underground C, uh, we could also Underground C Tamio. We can't protect her, but she could draw the counter magic away, uh, making a way for Psychic Frog, which is a much more powerful card at this point in the game. So I think that's the game plan. And then we have Ponder. Once we have a little more information about what they're doing, we have the ability to Ponder. They are going to be able to plow around days here, though. Okay, another Wasteland. That's probably going to go after our Underground Sea again. That's fine. So they... I've used two of their four likely underground seas or uh, wastelands. So we are going to need a ponder for our land here, but we were able to put back the bad land, but maybe we wanted to keep that. And when I say bad land, I don't mean the blue black or the red black dual land. I mean the uh, mystic sanctuary. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not greedy. I'm not crazy. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and attack. See what this triggers. This shouldn't do anything but trigger a clue. And then uh, I think it'd be extremely greedy to waste here when we can just go with the Beanstalk again. We haven't yet gotten uh, a card that can utilize the power of Beanstalk, but it's just a matter of time before we draw a Force or a Murktide. We can't yet cast that Murktide, but we will be able to eventually. If they don't play a land here, okay. If they waste, um, that sucks. I'm not going to waste them back because they could just be sitting on like a whole handful of land. They've never had an opportunity to play anything but Wastelands. Okay, that is great. That's precisely the kind of card we wanted to pick up here. Okay, so I think the card to get here with that, because we're so close to turning on, um, we're so close to turning on Leyland Binding, I think I'm going to go ahead and get Xander's Lounge here, and then I can just fetch for a Tundra or a... Um, is Savannah still on my deck? I think it is, yeah. So let's play this out. All right, and we'll pass. We're not in... I mean, it's going to suck if we have to daze this uh, Xander's Lounge back to our hand. Oh, they don't have a land. Okay, now we're going to... Oh, they do have a land. They were just making me think they didn't. <laughs> Toying with my heart, as they say. Okay, uh, 
I think it's worth pondering for land. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and attack first. See if they have any anything to say about that. Actually, that was a bad play because I might have had to bounce this and then I wouldn't have been able to ponder for land number three. Okay, so let's go ahead and ponder here. I'll take a Lorien reveal. They'll take a lot of stuff. I That's pretty perfect. So I think we want a Beanstalk sandwich here. Drop my land for the turn. I will crack this if absolutely necessary to daze, but um, I'm not going to crack it to get a clue. I don't need cards that badly. Next turn, we have the potential to Beanstalk again. Uh, and I mean, based on everything I've seen so far, that's good. We want to be doing that. I'm so glad I didn't waste them, by the way. Think of how terrible it would have been to waste them when they had two other lands. All right. Uh, I don't, I mean, we do have one more ETB tap land in our deck, but I don't think it's right to get it. I'm just going to draw the beanstalk here. I think, so options. I think we, um, I think we do beanstalk number three here. Okay. They are interacting. I believe they are on Stifle Knot. This is very much like a Stifle Knot play here. That's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and attack. I think at this point, we know the top card is a land. So actually, it's it's lucky, kind of, that they stifled us. Because I can just get a land off the top with Clue. I'll crack a Clue. And... I'll play land. Um, them having stifled, I mean, they could definitely stifle again. We don't know what our next card is. I think it's fine to just chill. Um, I don't, I want to maximize optionality. We are going to want a blue source so that we can get Murktide. I'm not worried about them stifling our land. I'm worried about them wasting our lands because we, do, we don't have just a ton of vegetables in our deck. Okay. It'll be interesting to see what they do here. I think this is going to be a uh, dress down, which I'll probably just daze. They'll probably daze it back. Yeah, I think it's correct to go ahead and daze here. So I'll get a Tundra. Do I want to get a Tundra? I kind of need a Trop to be able to cast our next spell, and we don't have any white, spell, uh, white spells in our... So I'm going to go ahead and play that out, and I'll just daze this. This will probably force them to daze, which is fine. I mean, it's still a one-for-one. One. If they force this, I'll be really happy. But that'll... Okay, wow, we stopped it. Okay, great. So that did keep us back a land drop. That was our only days in our deck, though. And so getting that out of the way... First of all, we're going to definitely board days out for game two and games three. Maybe not game three, but I'm so glad I stopped that. So they're just going to get... They could have a stifle here, which would be bad, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. They are getting two cards. Okay, they're fetching. I think they have a stifle. So Null Drifter is not catastrophic here. Oh, what are they getting back? They're getting back a... I can't even tell what that's pointed to. Um, a ponder. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So Murktide Regent will be able to tangle, tango with uh, Null Drifter, and I may even draw into another land when I cast it because I'm going to get to... Triggers. So it's interesting. My Murktide is basically like an old Drifter too. And uh, Null Drifter, uh, Murktide will flip Tameo as well. Whether it resolves or not. They are giving me a long delay here. They're going to need their clock as badly as I do. Now that I know what they're on, I can play a lot more confidently. I, I figured they were on... Uh, okay. Yeah, I figured they were on um, what they're on. I also get to play around um, days here. So one, two, three. I do think I kick out Lorian here and I'll kick out one of uh, the lands. So this is gonna be a big one. Okay, we got a plow. Do we have a land to go with it? We don't. So this flips. So I'm gonna immediately plus. Oh, they conceded. Interesting. So I think what, what happened was uh, they now that we were cashing in the Beanstalk, they started to realize it's just a matter of time before we start drawing cards like Leyland Binding, Force of Will, and Breaking Symmetry. All right. So 
against their deck, Carpet is most definitely coming in. Carpet's a great card against these uh, blue uh, tempo decks. Um, can sign to memory can stop both uh, Stifle Knot and Null Drifter, and it can even stop the Null Drifter trigger. So that makes it not a terrible card here. Um, cards that can come out. Days is coming out on the draw. I don't want to take out Plow. Um, Witherbloom Command is pretty bad, though. They don't really have anything in their deck that I know, like that I've seen that Witherbloom can hit. And I think Regrowing Lands is not the most powerful move to be making. We might be able to cut just or bring in just one consigned to memory. I mean, it does. It is pretty good. I mean, it counters all their threats. Uh, I mean, it doesn't counter. Yeah, like if they're playing a stock blue white uh, dreadnought de- list, stuff not, then they have two to four uh, null drifters, and they have four Phyrexian dreadnoughts, and this counters all of them. It doesn't really counter anything else though. Because it doesn't counter activated abilities. And I don't like the fact that it just hits it on the stack. We need to be able to remove it after it resolves, hence Leyline Binding. I think we just bring in one. I don't want to cut the Tamios because Tamio was so good there. Um, I mean, I guess we could cut one. No, I'm not going to cut her. She's too good. Uh, I mean, like, again, I've, I've expressed my sentiment that I think this is the most band worthy cards in the format are definitely frog tamio and uh sewing micro spawn and when you have a card that you think is band worthy i think it's suboptimal to play less than four of them in most cases all right we're on the draw we have a pretty good hand actually i like this hand i like the forces um we can stop their ab shenanigans i think what we do is we probably open wasteland and then see if they waste us and if I'm going to keep this for sure. The biggest threat is stifling Lorian Revealed would be pretty catastrophic for us. There's no chance that we would wasteland them. They would have to be completely stuck on mana for us to wasteland them. Okay, a good start. That means that this uh, Lorian Revealed is not going to get wasted. I'm, I can't afford to play on basics because I have to assemble a critical mass. I think this is going to go get a Tundra. And I am doing this on my turn because I definitely don't want them to be able to waste it. If they waste our waste, I'll be so happy. I don't think that'll happen, but yeah, this wasteland is basically there as our days, uh, a long-term pay, down payment on days. All right, brainstorm. They do play a pretty lit, low land count. Like a lot of these lists play like 18 lands. So it isn't entirely out of the realm of possibility that they brainstorm lock themselves. Okay, they didn't. Okay, ponder. So this is an alternate way to shuffle since they didn't find a fetch. They did shuffle. Okay, so they were able to shuffle away, you know, theoretically bad cards. I think we could just play out the Mystic Sanctuary. We don't have any early plays. This can go get a Surveil Land. This can also potentially get a uh, Underground Sea. But there's no reason to subject ourselves to risk of uh, Wasteland. Oh, they're not doing anything. That's good for us. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to fetch here, and if they stifle it, I'm just going to let it happen. Okay, wow. So I think Hedge Maze is totally fine here, and we can we want to get uh, up the Beanstalk for sure. That's the best card. Psychic Frog's not bad. We don't immediately have a way to cast it, but we will eventually. All right, so I think what we do here is we probably play out, probably play out a, Tundra. I mean, we could play out a Trop, which is like a redundant mana source. We don't have, really have an immediate need for it. I want to protect our, my Tundra. So yeah, I am going to play out the redundant um, blue source. We're going to play this out. We're going to pass. I will pitch Psychic Frog to Force if it comes down to it. Uh, cards that I do care about would be like an end step dress down. If they do that, I will force and I probably will pitch frog just because I don't immediately have a mana source for it. Yeah, that's going to be a force for me. If they force back, that's fine. We do have the tundra and we do have the plow if they play out a, um, okay, good. We stopped it. Yeah. I mean, that's like the must force card in their deck is dress down. 
Everything else is negotiable. It's fine. They may be trying to maneuver a way to get rid of Tamio. And I think that's Tamio's greatest strength is she's distracting. She distracts opponents. She draws fire. She does so many things that like a one mana card probably, yeah, I mean, she just clears the way. <laughs> I love it. Okay, here's that wasteland I suspected was there. I'm really glad that I didn't play on my Tundra. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to play that out, and I'm just going to attack, get a clue, and we have no reason to crack now. We'll wait. If they put another uh, dress on the stack, I will crack looking for a blue card. They're doing something. I don't care about that. So what I'll do is if they put um, a powerful creature in play, I will um, plow doorkeeper. I'm going to go ahead and plow now. This means that they'll have to find a stifle off these two cards. All right, if they have a force for this, I can crack a clue and force back. All right, so they're going to get their two cards. But unless one of those cards, they don't actually have the ability to play it in the land. It's not like Uro. So we did stop their Null Drifter there. And they may very well have land. Um, I am going to crack the clue here. And crack it like that. Would we have gotten a blue card for force? Sometimes people get like jumpy and like start stifling these, and I'm totally fine with that. They're definitely thinking like they have a stifle, which makes me really glad that, uh, you know, they didn't get a chance to use it. Okay, we drew a land. It's not the, not the worst. We've got plenty of things to do with mana. I think we go ahead and attack first. I mean, if we play this out, we have Hardcast Force. I'm going to assume that they have a Daze in hand. I wouldn't be opposed to flipping Tamio here, so I am going to go ahead and try to see what I what I get here. If I can find a Ponder or a Brainstorm, we can flip her. That doesn't do it. Let's just pass. I think we let this go. It's already more than replaced itself. I don't want to go down off consigned to memory. So we do have Flood Strand for uh, Mystic Sanctuary for Lorien Revealed, which is a pretty good mid-game play that I think I'm interested in making. I'm just going to chill, and then I can do it in step. So that way, maybe they tap out, and we find them ourselves in a situation where we can resolve it. Worst case scenario, we do have Leyland Binding, which is quite good. Uh, yeah, Doorkeeper. So hopefully they try to throw a creature out there, and then we can Leyland Bind that creature. Or uh, we can ley line it, ley line it once the creature's on the stack. So I'm gonna go ahead and go green, colorless, white. We're gonna attempt to ley line bind here. If they're playing brazen borrow, which I don't think they generally do play, they could stifle this. I'll force if they stifle. Okay. All right. So the dreadnought is gonna die here unless they have a stifle. Okay. Wow. Such good value. All right. Um, and I think they didn't have a force there. I'm going to go for it. I'll have lots of mana. So let's Mystic Sanctuary. Let's put Lorien Revealed on top. And I'm going to play a land. I'm going to attempt a Lorien Revealed here. This is their opportunity to waste me. They didn't waste me. Um, I've, I think we have so many lands. I'm just going to keep the option of fetching for later. So we're going to go blue. Uh, what colors do I want to leave up? I think I want to leave green and white up. Wow, it resolved. It resolved, team. Uh, okay, here's the deal. I think beanstalking is unnecessary uh, right here. It'll almost certainly get dazed. We've never given them an opportunity to daze anything. Uh, I can instead hold up consigned to memory. I think at this point I've got so many lands. Oh, they are going to waste me. They're going to waste me off black. Uh, yeah, that's like closing the barn door after the horses have left. So consign to memory. Um, I'm trying, like I'll, I will consign. Uh, okay, they have another one. But like wastelands this late in the game are not a big deal. I'm going to blue here. Okay, I'm just going to go to the next phase. I'd rather be able to do stuff around days okay great 
So here we go. Um, I have a lot of options. I think first I play this land. Then I'm going to go green, colorless, beanstalk. They still have a lot of cards in hand, but their tempo plan is effectively over. I'm getting some lag. They might be conceding. They conceded. Wow. Beanstalk was strong there. All right. So we got a 3-2. Again, losing to Eldrazi and losing to... What was the other deck we lost to? Right, let's take a look at... I'm going to go to the game history uh, real quick so we can figure out what that game was. That bothers me that I don't remember. Uh, so it was Alvos. What were they on? But um, you can see that the deck, like the, the inclusion of white, it was super awkward. The mana was super awkward. It was hard to get things done. Um, oh, yeah, rescam. Yeah, we so we lost to rescam and we lost to Eldrazi. Again, like I'm not embarrassed to lose to either of those decks, especially considering one of them was, you know, banned here. Uh, it's banned out of existence. That's the last game I will ever have to play against that deck. Actually, no, wait. This was the post ban. This was the deck that they were playing was actually rescam without the grief. So it's it's on it's on me. I can't I can't say like I can't use that as an excuse. I don't get a grief pass. Um, okay, so taking a look at the deck again, it's all screwed up looking. But basically, uh, Witherbloom Command was good. Uh, it almost saved us in that round against Eldrazi, where it gained us some life and milled some cards. That was a good use of the modes. Um, we just couldn't, we couldn't deal with, uh, I think both games they had, uh, kicked, um, Mycosynth, Mycospawn, uh, sewing Mycospawn. And that card is just, it's absolutely devastating to get double stone rain and not even be able to force it, you know? Um, Psychic Frog, I felt like we had, we never were without an engine. I never sat there with like a completely empty hand and nothing to do. Uh, there might have been some games like that, but that was by our own making during Eldrazi. We pitched a few cards to make a second frog big on the hopes that it would do enough damage to limit their options, and it did. It did a very good job of getting them low on life, and they finished the game on two life. But as we've seen, uh, having Yavimaya in their deck just gives them a very powerful alternate way to uh, cast spells without doing damage to themselves. So I consider this to be a success. Now, is this better than the uh, three color with just blue, black, and green. I don't think so. And the next video I'm gonna make will be me playing with that build. And I've tweaked it a little bit. Uh, Pokemoki made that recent guide to Beanstalk. And Pokemoki is famous for the bug beans. Um, he's playing Psychic Frog. Uh, he's playing, I think, at least one or two Baleful Strix. Um, and of course, Wither Bloom Command. Very powerful in the meta right now. Uh, and the full four uh fatal push she's only playing three psychic frogs and when i said a few minutes ago when a card is ban worthy you should probably be playing all four of it if you can and i think we can so we're going to all right well that is the league uh i hope you're enjoying these i hope you're learning from decisions i make and like some of the decisions i make are they pan out some of them don't and i hope all of that is just like a little bit of like tacit knowledge memory like it all just forms this gestalt of like, okay, do I daze here? <laughs> okay, am I safe to waste here? You know, like like those little decisions that make Legacy the most intricate and interesting Magic the Gathering format, which may very well make it the most intricate game in existence. Like I, I do think the depth of this game, the fact that you can play it for like 30 years like I have on and off, and still be discovering like interesting new interactions. The fact that there are like, you know, 50,000 cards, even though the reality, the legacy card pool is like maybe like uh, 200 cards that people actually play. Uh, and we can actually see the size of the legacy card pool by going MTG top eight. Check this out. You want to see how many cards are in legacy that people are playing with? All we need to do is this is like all the cards and you multiply that. It's 20 and we go to like page eight. 15, page 22, 29, <laughs> okay, 32. So 32 times 20, uh, which is, I believe, 800. 32 times 20, am I crazy? 640, okay. Well, for some reason, they're showing me this Winchester. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, it's called the 3220, that's why. Okay, so uh, 640 cards in Legacy. And a lot of these are super duper French. Like, I have I don't know what this card does. 
I've never heard of this card. Uh, actually, I, I might have heard of it, but it's not a good card. Uh, Violent Outburst, you know, like Waker of Waves. Like these are even the fringe cards because this uh, draws from a database of like 474 decks over the last four weeks. In fact, if we even go back, like let's just do all 2024 decks. So this is like nine months basically of cards. Uh, so let's go here and let's just do what we just did. And I'm going to find out how many cards are have been played to some sort of tournament finish, like a top eight in 2024 in the format of legacy. And I'll, I'd be willing to bet it's fewer than a thousand. All right. <laughs> MTG or MTG top eight stopped working, but we'll, we'll just go with that 640 figure as a rough estimate of how many cards are in legacy. So if you think about all those different cards, all their potential interactions together, it's, it's not nearly as complicated as the total interactions you could encounter in like EDH, for example, which is a format I have no desire to play. I don't want to play like, you know, a politicking, you know, um, format where everybody's trying to do their little Timmy combos and stuff like that. Like that, that is not my style. I am very much just interested in like a game that is simple enough that I can actually understand that I feel where I'm making decisions that where I have agency and it's not just crazy luck. It's one of the, that's one of the reasons I don't like vintage is it feels like extremely luck based in the sense that, Oh, they had a mental misstep. Why is a mental misstep legal in this format? I have no idea. But for some reason, like they decided to have a format where every single card is legal. Again, I think it takes a lot of skill to play vintage, but it also takes a constitution that I don't have where I'm okay with just saying, I just got completely screwed. I got completely robbed and I just have to be okay with that, right? In legacy, you almost always have agency. When you lose, it's almost always a mistake you made. I In that game against Eldrazi, game two, that Eldrazi match where uh, it came down to them being able to exile my Leyland Binding with Warscape Battle Mage or Battle whatever, um, and then Wastescape. Um, they exiled my uh, Leyland Binding. They got their... Glaring Flesh Raker back, and then they were able to Kozlik's Command for a whole bunch of tokens and deal direct damage to me, even though I had lethal damage in the air coming at them next turn. Uh, I mean, when things like that happen, you can say, oh, I'm so unlucky. But I bet you, I bet you, if you put the same the same cards into the hands of Reed Duke or Lewis Scott Vargas or even maybe Bosch and Roll, right? Uh, even, uh, yeah, a lot of players could probably figure out a line, a sequence of, and and maybe they wouldn't even get into a situation that was as dire as the one that I was in uh, because they would have just figured out like, oh, I definitely need to force this or, oh, I definitely need a mulligan in this hand or something like that, right? So uh, that's what I love about Legacy specifically. It's the only f- version of Magic the Gathering I play. It's really the only format I have entry, any interest in. Uh, and I know that may sound clo- close-minded, but I'm a busy dad. I've got a full-time job. Uh, I need to go deep on a format. And this is the format that I played you know, as a kid, I went to a type 1.5 tournament. Uh, and that was like one of the biggest tournaments I participated in. I was like 14 or 15 years old. Right. And, um, it, one, it was like the first 1.5 tournament in my city basically, because it was this new thing. Like, Oh, you, you could still play Mishra's workshops if you can afford them, but you can't play black Lotus. And I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. Cause I, I don't want to buy black Lotus. Right. Uh, and eventually they turned, type 1.5 into legacy and they ban certain cards like bizarre Baghdad and Mishra's workshop and stuff like that. But, uh, but I got to play kind of like the precursor of legacy back as a kid. And then I stopped playing magic for like 10 years. Then I came back to it and then I stopped for another 10 years. Then I came back to it. Right. Uh, so, uh, it's just like when I have time, this is the format I want to be playing. This is the high skill, uh, format in my mind. And I'm sure EDH, you could argue that's higher skill. You could also potentially argue that drafting is even higher skill, right? That, that playing like limited is higher skill than playing constructed. But uh, because of my time budget and everything like that, legacy is what makes sense to me. And I want to be playing control decks where I always am potentially in the game where, uh, you know, I can draw a Merc Tide and be able to swing for lethal or uh, the game opens up and I actually do have a reasonable shot of mulliganing to a force of will to stop uh, the epic storm, right? Um, or where a top decked Witherbloom command completely puts me back in the game, right? Because it's just a good card to put in your deck. Like you should be rewarded for putting good cards in your deck and constructing a mana base that can reliably cast those good cards, right? So um, anyway, this um, just look for the next round uh, where I'm going to be playing a much more simple 
version, just the three color version of Beanstalk. And I do think that's better, but I'm so glad that you joined me. Here, let me get this up on the screen one more time uh, with all the broken card glory, you know, Lorian revealed looking super jank. Um, this is, this is the, this is the deck, man. Like, uh, okay. Leyline binding, amazing card. Source of pleasures, amazing card. But to be able to have a much simpler mana base and actually play some basic lands, it's going to be great. So uh, look for that video tomorrow. And until next time, be excellent to each other and party on.